You see it all the time online. Somebody posting a picture of their print asking, what is this line running up the back of my print and how do I get rid of it? Well, the, the usual answer is, of course, that's the Z seam. All models have them. You can try to hide it in a corner or on the back of the print, or you can set the Z seam to randomize so it scatters it throughout the vertical axis of the model. But it's going to look like a bunch of plastic zits. Beyond that, there isn't much you can do about it. And all of that is pretty much true. There isn't much you can do about it. Well, until now that is, the Orca Slicer developers have taken this on as a challenge and came up with a solution to get rid of the Z seam or at the very least minimize it. Orca Slicer 2.0 now includes scarf seams. While 2.0 is a full release, the scarf seams are considered beta and still being developed. But don't let that disappoint you. Adaptive layers in Curve have been considered experimental for years. Now in this video, we're going to explore, explore the new scarf seams and see how we can put them to use. This video is powered by PCBWay. Elevate your projects with PCBWay's cutting edge 3D printing capabilities. With the state of the art facility, PCBWay can take your project from prototype to production. Just upload your CAD file to their instant quote page, choose from their large selection of printing materials, add any special requirements, and click Submit. While you're on the PCBWay website, enter their badge design contest to celebrate their 10th anniversary with $1,000 going to the winner. Follow the link in the video description, visit PCBWay.com today, and bring your ideas to life. A scarf joint is a method of joining two members end-to-end -end in woodworking or metalworking. The scarf joint is used when the material being joined is not available in the length required. Now, the folks behind the scenes at Orca Slicer brought this same technique to 3D printing to help eliminate the unsightly Z seam. And of course, as usual, I've rambled on a little bit longer than I probably should have. Let's open up Orca Slicer 2.0, load a model, and see what we can do with the scarf seams. I'm Bill. And this is pushing plastic. Okay, so I have a simple part loaded up. Just a cylinder, 50 millimeters in diameter, 75 millimeters tall. I wanted something round because let's face it, when we see the seam, it's usually on a round object. Otherwise, we could hide it in a corner. Now, I'm going to be printing this out on my K1 Max. And I'm going to use Free Mover PLA. And I'll be using my standard... Uh, 0.2 millimeter settings. So we'll slice this up and print it out so we have something to compare our results with. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's my baseline print with my standard settings for the K1 Max and my filament. It looks as expected for something as simple as a cylinder. You can see the Z seam running up the back pretty much as advertised. Let's jump back into Orca Slicer and enable the scarf joint, make a few settings, do another print, and see how we do. All right, let's start setting up our scarf seam. So under the quality, I'm coming down to the seam category, and I'm going to go to the scarf joint seam, and I'm going to go ahead and set this to contour and hole. More often than not, my models will have a hole in them. Might as well just go for it. I'm going to change the inner scarf to enable. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set my enable conditional scarf joint right here. This will help smooth the outside where like a standard seam just doesn't hide the seam at a sharp corner. The next one I'm going to do is my scarf joint speed. I'm going to go ahead and change this to 100 millimeters per second. You could also go with the percentage. I'm going with 100 millimeters per second. Orca recommends a speed lower than this. They don't say what, but I'm going to go ahead and use 100 millimeters per second as my starting point, and I'll adjust downward from there to fine tune it. Now, they also recommend changing the extrusion rate smoothing, which is over here on the speed tab. 
and we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom and what you need to do is think of this as a speed ramp um it will slow down and ramp up the speed before and after a model feature that would cause a sudden change in the flow rate I'm going with 300 millimeters per second. Uh, that's very useful when you come to features like overhangs. Now, while I'm at the speed settings, I want to come all the way up here and I'm going to change my outer wall speed to 80 millimeters per second. That's kind of slow, but it's only on the outer wall. Um, this will, again, be a starting point and I'll probably end up making changes to this as I fine tune. Hopefully I can go up higher, but A seems to be a good starting point for me. So now I'm going to go back to my quality tab. And what I want to do is my wall printing order. I, I want to change this to inner, outer, inner. So we'll go ahead and we'll make that change. I'm not a big fan of having to use this. Uh, my biggest worry with using this setting is that models with overhangs are gonna suffer. This is something I definitely wanna do more testing with. All right, so, think of what else do I need to change here? And I think that's going to go ahead and do it. One thing I wanna experiment with, and I'll do multiple prints is I'm going to leave my wall generator at Arachne for now, but I also want to see what it does in classic mode, if there's a difference or not. So let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to keep this as its own profile setting because if I have a model that I don't need to use this, I'm not going to use it. This is only in beta. I'm sure there's going to be enhancements to it later on, but let's go ahead and I'm going to save this one. And I think I'm just going to call it uh, K1 Max Scarf. Yeah, let's add seams to it. And I'll go ahead and save that. All right, let's go ahead and slice this and we'll print it and we'll take a look at what our results are. So here's our model with our newly updated settings. And it actually looks pretty good. I have to admit, I'm impressed. If you're looking for the seam, yeah, you can find it, mostly because you're looking for it. It's not right out in your face. I'm impressed with what I'm seeing. Now, I did this print using the Arachne settings, but I also went back and I printed the same model with the classic settings. So, to me, they both look equally well. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. All right, so that was pretty interesting, but let's jump back into Orca Slicer, make a few more changes and see how the scarf seams handle it. All right, so let's make a few more changes and turn the cylinder into a cup. All right, so what I'm going to do is change my walls. I'm going to leave my walls at three. I'm going to change my top to zero. No top layers. I'm going to change my infill to zero. And I'm going to leave my bottom at six. And this will give us a cup. And we'll take a look at this real quick. And as you can see, basically it's a cup. We got a bottom. And we have an outside, no top, no infill. Let's go ahead and what we're going to do is we are going to leave all of our other settings alone. So we'll be using a scarf seam on this and let's see what happens. All right, so here's our prints. This one is with my stock profile settings. It looks pretty much like it should. A big old seam running up the back right here. But here's the the version with the scarf seam and it's looking really good again i'm impressed with what i'm seeing 
The folks behind the scenes at Orcus Slicer seem to have done a great job. But I have one more test I want to try. Let's see how well scarf seams work while using variable layer heights. So let's go ahead and jump back into Orca Slicer, set up a print using variable layer height and a scarf seam. Okay, so this test I'm kind of looking forward to. What I want to do is I want to apply adaptive layers. So I'm going to select my object. I'm going to come up here to the variable layer height. And I'm going to go ahead and select the adaptive layers. Let's change this more towards quality. Let's just take it down a little bit more. There we go. And let's add some smoothing to it. And that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slice this with the adaptive variable layer height. And I'm also going to use my scarf seam. So I'm already at my scarf seam profile, the same exact settings we used on the previous prints. Let's slice this, print it out and see what happens. Now, if you never used uh, variable layer height, I have a whole video on that on my channel. If you want, check that out. And, oh, that's interesting. Kind of arcs around up at the top. That's very interesting. Uh, I like, I'm not sure what to expect here. Let's print this out and see what we get. All right. So here's the print with my stock settings. Um, has no variable layer height. Pretty much what I expected. And here's the print using the adaptive layer height and the scarf seam. Now, I can see the seam and I can see the spiral running up the back right here. It doesn't look real bad, but to me it's just as noticeable as my, the seam in my standard print. I went back and I enabled scarf seam around entire wall and i gotta say it made a world of difference uh i think i'll be leaving that enabled as a default for my profile i can still see a little bit of the seam but not like this one let me know what you think there you have it scarf seam seemed to be doing a really good job I like what I'm seeing. Uh, I plan on doing a little bit more experimenting, and I encourage you to do the same. I hope you found the information in this video useful. If you did, hit that like button and let me know down in the comments. Smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content in the future. And if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing.